Coming up on today's show, Jocelyn Allo ties the all-time home run record. We got some bet online odds for Heisman Trophy winner and national championship, as well as our five players we feel like need a breakout season for the 2022 Oklahoma Sooners. All that and more on today's episode of Locked On Sooners. You are Locked On Sooners, your daily podcast on the Oklahoma Sooners. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is up, Sooners Nation, and welcome to the Locked On Sooners podcast. My name is John Williams. You can follow me on Twitter at John9Williams. You can read my work covering the Oklahoma Sooners over at the Sooners Wire at usatoday.com. You can also follow the show on Twitter at Locked On Sooners and on Facebook, Locked On Sooners podcast. Free and available wherever you get your podcasts. Also available on YouTube, so subscribe over there. Let me know how you feel about the show. Send your questions, send your comments. Love to hear some feedback as well. Over the weekend, we had a lot of great notes come out for the Oklahoma Sooners in favor of the football team, but got to start with Jocelyn Allo, who tied the all-time home runs record of Lauren Chamberlain at number 95. She had five home runs over the weekend uh, to to get her tied with the record and has a five-game set coming up this week for the Sooners. But really, the Oklahoma softball team has just been dominant all year long. They've scored 95 runs. They've only allowed two unearned runs on the season. And from the pitching staff to the plate, Everybody is just balling out. And yes, Jocelyn Allo, she leads the team in home runs with 17, 18 RBIs on the season. She's batting 500 on the year with an 1,800 plus OPS. Just an absolutely incredible season to start for her. But really, it's everybody uh, that is just playing really, really good for them so far through the season. Um, you know, they've got one, two, three, they have three players hitting over 500, as many as eight players hitting over 400 on the season uh, beyond Jocelyn all those seven home runs. You got Tiara Jennings, who's just continuing to be on fire from her freshman year. She's got five home runs, 12 RBIs as well. Uh, and then, you know, Jana Johns, she's got three home runs, Kinsey Hansen, two home runs, Grace Lyons with two home runs and Grace Green with two home runs as well. What's incredible to me is that, with Jocelyn Allo's seven home runs, she's not even leading the team in slugging, although you know she's got far more at-bats than Grace Lyons does. But if you just consider the minimum number of at-bats, then yeah, Jocelyn Allo is basically leading in all slash court categories. Uh, like I said, an 1895 OPS, a 1300 slugging percentage, and a 595 on base percentage. And the incredible thing about what Jocelyn Allo is doing is you'd figure that people would – start pitching around her, not really pitching to her, but because of what's happening behind her in the lineup with Kinsey Hansen, with Jana Johns, teams can't really pitch around her because they've got really, really good players uh, coming up to bat right after her. You know, Kinsey Hansen, a lot of times is the one in that three hole. Um, you know, she's, she's got an OPS of 1283. She's hitting 440 on the season, two home runs and six RBIs. And she doesn't have a ton of RBIs. Why? Because Jocelyn Allen is often clearing the, clearing the bases ahead of her but she's got 20 total bases. She's slugging 800. I mean, she's having a really, really good season too. Like, you know, the three, you know, players that were, you know, all Americans last year or, and even grace Lyons, um, that are on pace to be all Americans again, this season, um, you know, they're playing really, really good. And so the, it makes you wonder like, what is the ceiling for Jocelyn Olive's home run number this year? Because you look at just her home run totals through 10 games. So she's averaging a home run every 5.2 plate appearances. So that's 19% of her plate appearances. This isn't just at-bats. So this combines her, her at-bats plus her walks. Um, and she's got 19% of her at-bats go for a home run. If you factor in what she had in the 2021, yeah, the 2021 season where she had 224 at-bats, that's going to put her at 40 home runs in 2022, which is a pretty remarkable number. So we're looking at if she is able to hit that, even if she only hits like 35 home runs this season, you're looking at a, a year where she not only breaks the all-time home run record, but she eclipses it by more than 30 home runs or about 30 home runs, which is incredible. Like this is, I mean, what we've seen in baseball at times over the last couple of decades, you know, where, you know, 
Barry Bonds comes up and beats the record, or Mark McGuire and Sammy Sosa, they duel it out to beat Roger Maris's record, and then Barry Bonds comes back and then even eclipses that. Now, those guys had a little bit of help medically with some pharmaceuticals, but so for, so what Jocelyn Allo has been able to do through the first 10 games of the season is just absolutely remarkable. And you don't really expect her to slow down, especially once she breaks the record and has a little bit of that pressure off of her shoulders. I mean, the sky is the limit. And again, you know, I, I said it early on, but the thing that's incredible about how well this team is playing is not only is it hitting well, but it's pitching really, really well also. Um, your, your three primary players or your primary pitchers, Nicole May, Jordy Ball, and Hope Troutwine, they haven't allowed to earn run. They've got a whip of less than 0.6 or 0.61 on average as a, as a unit. Uh, they're 10 and 0. Uh, they've struck out 87 batters. So they've struck out in almost as many batters as the offense has scored runs, which is pretty incredible if you think about it. Um, you know, the, they're averaging more than a strikeout an inning. This team has just been incredible. And, and they've been incredible on defense as well. Uh, they've only allowed 18 hits in 10 games. So that just goes to show just how dominant this team can be this year. Now, it's not to say that they won't lose a game because it's re just really, really difficult to run a full season undefeated. Even last year's team, we saw how good they were. They ran into trouble even in the regular season, ran into some trouble in the, the College World Series, and even the regionals, they had to battle back from you know losing the first game in the in the championship of the College World Series to Florida State. Lost the first game to James Madison, and then had to fight their way through the losers bracket just to get to the final. And so, like this is a team that I mean, anything can happen on a given day on the diamond. Even the best teams they lose games from time to time, but this is a team that's going to be really, really well positioned to have another dominant run in the 2022 season and. Jocelyn Allo is going to be a big part of that, but Tiara Jennings, it's leading off. You know, Patty Gasso talked about if there's a person that could potentially break uh, uh, Jocelyn Allo's record down the road, and she thought of Tiara Jennings. Like, because she got to play as a freshman, she hit 28, 29 home runs last year and is already off to a really great start in 2022. I mean, she'll be the person that has a chance to break it now. She'll have to, like, pick up the pace a little bit and have some big seasons, but she – seems to have the same power hitting capabilities as Jocelyn Allo. And so big shout out to Jocelyn Allo. She gets the high five of the week to start off uh, Sooners or locked on Sooners this week. And man, it's going to be a lot of fun to watch her over the next you know few months as Oklahoma makes another run to a college world series national championship. But coming up next, let's talk a little bit of recruiting and give you some bet online odds that we've got for the 2022 college football season. Uh, Heisman Trophy odds, national championship odds. Uh, we'll talk about that next after I talk to you about bet online. Football might be over this season, but really is it ever over? We got recruiting going on, but basketball is in full steam on the court for both college and pro hoops for all the latest odds, totals, player performance props to where the next fired coach is going to land. BetOnline.net is the number one spot for all your sports betting needs. BetOnline remains the best spot for all your sports scores, podcasts, and news this season. And it's not just basketball. BetOnline.net is your source for hockey, boxing, UFC, and I don't know if you got in on Olympic coverage, but they had that going on as well. So they got you covered everywhere that you want to have sports covered. So head to the website today. Use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and action over at BetOnline. That's BetOnline where the game starts. And so on the recruiting trail, the Oklahoma Sooners are big in on David Stone, four-star defensive tackle out of, he was out of Dell City, transferred to Bradenton to go to IMG Academy. That's the same school that Del, uh, Brendan Raleigh Hiles, uh, Buki went to. Uh, but he's a guy that's four stars right now, likely going to end up as a five-star by the time it's all said and done. He's a six-five you see weights any, listed anywhere from 250 to 270 pounds and a, a kid that you look at his film, you look at his highlights and he just moves the pocket. He's a guy that crashes from the interior, played defensive tackle at the varsity level and he, he gets penetration interior. And not only is he able to get to the quarterback, but he's able to shed blocks and get to the running game as well just looks really, really dominant for, or looked dominant for Dell City. Now he's 
even got some frame to put on more strength and more size. The kid was only a sophomore and was playing like he was a senior in high school against some of these teams last year. So really that's, that's one of those, that's one of those recruits that yes, 2024 is really, really far out, but as things stand right now, you're seeing on three, you're seeing rivals and two, four, seven sports analysts all put in projections that David stone will end up with the university of Oklahoma. If you look at his social media feed, pretty much everything is pointing him to Oklahoma. He keeps talking about Oklahoma boomer sooner, you know, just constantly, uh, mentioning Oklahoma uh, on his Twitter feed and, and things like that. So if he's not coming to Oklahoma, it'll be the, the biggest rope and dope we've seen in college recruiting in a while. But uh, that's that's a player that's going to be fun to watch and keep an eye on. I, I think you'll continue to see more highlights from him training um, this fall or the spring, and then you'll see him in the fall as well. Bet online odds we've got for the 2022 season. So at for the Heisman Trophy um, – Dylan Gabriel's listed. His odds aren't great, according to Bet Online. Right now, he's got plus thirty three hundred um, odds in the future over at Bet Online, and that is not those aren't great odds. But hey, if you're a gambler, like those are you know that'd be that'd be interesting money to put on because he's going to be an offense that's going to allow him to be very very productive at a school that's going to allow him to win a lot of games, uh, and those odds are the same as Spencer Rattler at plus 3,300. And it's, you know, fascinating to see that a guy who was the Heisman favorite last year uh, dropped so far this year. And, you know, it wasn't all Spencer Rattler. It wasn't all completely on him, but it just, it's just interesting to see how Vegas is viewing his chances to win the Heisman trophy. Caleb Williams comes in with plus 500 odds. I would not touch that because I don't think USC is going to be good enough to warrant the national attention that he needs to overcome a guy like Bryce young, who's the favorite right now at bet online with plus 300 and CJ Stroud at Ohio state with plus 450. I mean, those two, those two schools are going to be two of the most talked about schools in college football in uh, 2022 as, as the favorites, like Alabama is going to be one of the favorites to make the college football playoff win the national title. Ohio state is also going to be one of the favorites as well. And so those quarterbacks, if they have productive years, they're going to probably be one, two for most of the season. You know, as good as Caleb Williams can be at times, I just don't think they're going to have enough talent at USC to win the Pac-12, to have an 11-win season, and put himself in the Heisman discussion from the get-go or really throughout the season. I mean, he'll be in it. They'll, you know, you'll see all the pieces written, all the the segments done on ESPN or or. NBC or whatever about Caleb Williams and the Heisman trophy. But I think by mid season, that'll kind of flicker out a little bit similar to how it did for, for Oklahoma this year. You know, even though Caleb Williams got a little bit of Heisman hype there after he took over as a starter, that kind of flamed out a little bit, but you know, Dylan Gabriel, I I think he's got a, you know, a decent shot. I mean, a lot would have to go right for the Oklahoma Sooners, but you know, here on locked on Sooners, we think a lot's going to go right for them in 2022 because they're going to have a really good quarterback. They got Marvin Mims still. They got Theo Weiss still. They got a good offensive coordinator. They're got a. They should have a pretty good run game. Their offensive line, yes, they're turning over a couple guys that are going to the NFL, but you still have, you know, two really or three of your your starters coming back in Andrew Rame, Chris Murray, and Anton Harrison. And so you think like if you can figure out your offensive line situation with Marquise Hayes and Tyrese Robinson going to the league, then you should be in pretty good shape. And I just think they're going to have a better chance to to put up good numbers um, offensively. The offense in 2021 just w- was not in sync. It just didn't look right for a lot of the season. And, you know, may, I mean, some of it was play calling. Some of it was the confidence in your quarterbacks. Some of it was the, the inconsistency at wide receiver, not necessarily from a play standpoint, but just the way that they rotated wide receivers off. And I, I don't think it allowed those guys to get in the groove and really play to their potential as a unit. And so I, I don't know. I, I like Dylan Gabriel's chances. I mean, if you're looking at kind of one of the long shot bets, I like his as much as maybe anybody, you know, you throw a hundred dollars down on him and if he wins it, you get 3,300. That's pretty solid. Like that's a good return of investment. Um, if you're into the betting thing, but let's talk about the national championship futures and, you know, to nobody's surprise, 
Alabama comes up with the number one odds uh, to win the national championship at plus 225. So you put $100 down on Alabama. If they win it, they get you get $225 back. Georgia comes in with, at th plus 375, Ohio State plus 500, and then Texas A&M at plus 1,400. Uh, fascinating that three SEC schools are in the top four. Uh, USC, they come in at plus 1,400. Again, I, that's to me, that's a fool's bet. I don't think that they make the college football playoff, and even if they do, they are not winning it. There's no chance that they're beating an Alabama or a Georgia. I don't think Oklahoma necessarily would be able to go in and beat an Alabama or a Georgia, but I'm not wasting money on USC to do it. That's for sure. Uh, and then way down, you got Oklahoma at plus 4,000. Same odds as Michigan, Notre Dame, um, and a little bit better than Ole Miss and Oregon. Uh, Clemson comes in just behind USC at plus 1,600. Wisconsin at plus 25. Uh, so you know Oklahoma, they're you know they're considered a long shot, and honestly, they probably should be. It's been you know, they missed the playoff the last couple of seasons. They didn't win the Big Twelve last year. They had a ton of turnover. We like the direction that they're heading. We like the coaching staff. We like the players that got in the transfer portal. We like the players they have coming back. But still, I, I would think that they should be considered a long shot to win the national title in twenty twenty two because the, of the SEC mountain that everybody's got to climb. Like everybody is still chasing the SEC, and. I talked about it on the show last week with Patrick Kahn, like when we're looking at Oklahoma and whether or not they're going to benefit or if it's going to be worse for them with no expansion, like nothing really changes because everybody is still chasing the SEC. Everybody is still chasing Alabama. And until somebody can knock off Alabama, like Clemson has been able to a couple times, it doesn't matter whether it's a 14 playoff or a 12 team playoff. Everybody's still chasing Alabama. I'm still in favor of the 12-team the playoff, but to me, nothing changes for Oklahoma, whether they leave in 2022 or 2025. The goal is still the same. you got to be able to beat Alabama, whether it's in, in conference play once you join the SEC or the college football playoff if you're able to get there. Now, does if you join the SEC a little bit sooner, does that make making a 14 college football playoff a little bit more challenging? Absolutely, but the goal is still the same. But looking at 2022, I mean, if you're if you're a gambler, like, hey, that's that that's a good like we talked about with Dylan Gabriel potentially winning the Heisman, you know, plus four thousand, like that's one of those return of investment bets you just make. It's like Kevin from the office, right? He's like, if anybody ever gives you ten thousand to one odds on anything, you you put money on it, you take them, right? Because you or a thousand to one odds. I can't remember the quote exactly, but. Anytime anybody gives you a thousand one or ten thousand one odds on anything, you take those odds and you put a little bit of money down on it because hey, you never know. It might be your day, your year that you actually hit on that. So plus four thousand odds on on Oklahoma. I'm not saying to do it. I'm not going to recommend or, or suggest that you do it. But if you're looking for a long shot, a long shot a team to throw some money on, those plus four thousand teams aren't bad choices. Um, even a Utah at plus five thousand isn't you know isn't terrible. Um, Oklahoma State at plus 6,600, Texas at plus 6,600. I think Texas has argued, probably got as good a chance as winning, of winning the national championship as USC. But like Oklahoma State with their defense, Utah with their defense, you know, those are interesting, interesting teams to, to look at if you're looking to put some money down on the futures of college football. But coming up next, let's talk about five players that I think need to have a breakout season for the Oklahoma Sooners in 2022. But before we do that, let me talk to you about rockauto.com. Rock Auto is a family-owned business serving auto parts customers online for more than 20 years. Why choose to spend up to 30, 50, or even 100% more for the same parts from a chain store or car dealership when you can go to Rock Auto and save? Rock Auto prices are always reliably low for every customer. They have everything you can need from brake parts, tail lamps, motor oil, and even new carpet. Why? Again, you could go to a storefront auto parts store. You can have the guy look through the computer or you could go to rockauto.com and use the computer yourself from the comfort of your own home. We've got a lot of inclement weather coming through Oklahoma right now. Why would you want to go to the, the storefront when you could just do it from your couch? Nice and cozy, warm, have it shipped directly to you, and you get the same price that the, the mechanic's getting. You get the same price that the, the, the auto parts store. You're getting better prices than those guys are going to give you. So go to rockauto.com and save today right locked on in there how did you hear us about us box so they know that we sent you amazing selection reliably low prices and all the parts your car will ever need at rockauto.com all right five players that i feel like need to have a breakout season for the oklahoma sooners 
in 2022. Uh, first, let's start on the offensive side of the ball. So I got three offensive players and two defensive players today, and we might do this again down the road because I feel like there's several more players that could fa- factor into this and need to have big seasons. But first of all, let's start. Excuse me. Let's start with Eric Gray, running back. So you lose Kennedy Brooks, a guy who's now in the top ten all-time leading rushers at Oklahoma. And you, yes, you have a Marcus Major who you really like. You got a Javante Barnes who you like. You got Gavin Sawchuk who you also really like. But Eric Gray is the guy that's proven that he can be a productive running back in the college in FBS. In the SEC, he rushed for more than 700 yards in a COVID shortened season. He's a dynamic playmaker in the passing game. He's a guy that you got to get the ball to, and he's a guy that Oklahoma needs to be a productive player uh, for them to have a successful 2022 season. And they could rely on their freshman running backs and get big seasons out of them. We've seen it happen in the past. But if you're wanting somebody that's got the experience of playing at the high, the highest level in college football against some of the best competition, and you want to get a dynamic playmaker on the field, Eric Gray is the guy. He can be a big-time home run threat in the running game. He can be a big-time home run threat in the passing game. You just got to get him the ball. And that was one of the failures of the 2021 season is that Lincoln Riley, after about the first half of the like five, six weeks of the season, just didn't give him the ball, didn't give him the opportunities. He'd get some snaps, but a lot of times he was kept in on pass protection. You're taking away one of his greatest abilities if you're leaving him in to pass protect and not flaring him out, getting him out on swing routes, some Texas routes, where you're letting him go over the middle of the defense and get him into the soft, soft spots of the zone. Because as teams were trying to take away so many downfield, you needed a guy that could be a check down option for your quarterbacks that could get you some easy, cheap yards. And Eric Gray is that guy. So I, I hope that Jeff Levy's got a plan to get him heavily involved in the offense this year because they need to get him involved in the offense because he's one of your better playmakers and he's a dynamic player. Just didn't get really an opportunity to show it for much of 2021. Next guy, we're going to go defense because it's just fun to go alternate. Uh, this is Justin Broyles. I think this is going to be a guy that's going to have a big season for the Oklahoma Sooners. Really, really played well down the stretch while Deller and Turner Yell was out. I spoke with Deller and Turner Yell as part of a series we're doing with Sooners Wire, just kind of in his lead up to the NFL draft. And I asked him, I said, who's the player on defense that you think is going to have a, a breakout season or is going to surprise a lot of Sooners fans? And he, this is the guy he talked about, Justin Broyles. And we actually, yeah, that was the guy I was thinking of way before I even talked to him. But his physicality, his aggressiveness, his ability to come down the hill. I think he's going to factor into the safety spot. Uh, we saw him play some slot corner for the Oklahoma Sooners. I think he's going to be one of the two starting safeties for Oklahoma with Key Lawrence. I think he's probably going to factor in as more your free sef- safety, and Key Lawrence will probably play more your strong safety position. But Justin Broyles, I think, is primed for a breakout. And, and losing Pat Fields, losing DTY on the back end of your defense, you're losing a ton of experience a ton of snaps, and those guys were invaluable leaders for that defense. I mean, Pat Fields was the captain. DTY was one of the leaders as well. And so you you need to have somebody uh, that can step up, and Justin Broyles, with the experience that he's had to this point in his career, I think he's going to be the guy that steps up to help lead that secondary uh, in the passing game and in their run fits as well. I think he's going to be, just like Lee Lawrence, I think both those guys are going to be able to be very, very capable at coming up and helping in run support. Uh, but I think he's a guy that has to have a breakout season for Oklahoma to be um, successful on the back end of their defense, to hold up in coverage in the back end of their defense and just help out your guys, DJ Graham, Woody Washington. They need to know that they're getting help uh, behind them so that they can play aggressively when they're in, in their route uh, and then and playing the wide receivers that thought to play in the Big Ten or sorry the Big Twelve, Big Ten. Um, the next guy, wide receiver Jaleel Farouk. We saw a glimpse of him in the Alamo Bowl against Oregon. This is a guy that's got dynamic playmaking ability, is able to make plays after the catch, and I think he can factor in as a slot receiver for Oklahoma. I know they moved Marvin Mims to the slot for the 2021 season. I'd like to see them move him back outside to primarily play. Uh, some of that Z receiver where he's not having to play a lot of bump and run uh, coverage against him, but you get him back outside, give him more room to work where he can threaten teams down the field and get stuff going across the middle as well. Um, So I would like to see Jalil Farouk kind of take over more of that slot role. I think you can also use him outside. If he is one of your starting three wide receivers, Mims, Farouk, Theo Wees, 
then you've got three guys that you feel like you could move around a little bit and not have them pigeonholed into one particular position. But if you do want to just keep him in one spot, then I think Jalil Farouk makes sense, a lot of sense, as your slot guy because he can work the middle. He can make guys miss in the open field, and he can make big plays in the passing game, get you a lot of yards after catch. Uh, next, another guy that showed out in the Alamo Bowl, Marcus Stripling. We lost Isaiah Thomas. We lost Nick Bonito. Lost Perrion Winfrey to the draft. You got to find pass rush from somewhere. Jalen Redmond's going to be able to provide it from the interior. We love Jeffrey Johnson and what he's going to be able to provide in the run game, but he's more of a run stopper. Uh, Jonah Lalu, he should be able to provide something from the interior as well, but he's more of an edge. But where is your next great pass rusher going to come from? You got Reggie Grimes, Clayton Smith, Ethan Downs on the depth chart at defensive end. But Marcus Stripling, I feel like, is going to be the guy that really takes a step forward. And, I mean, if any of those guys breaks out and has an eight-sack season, nine-sack season, ten-sack season, it's going to be really, really good for the Oklahoma Sooners. But they got to have somebody. I think Marcus Stripling is going to be the guy that really does that. We saw just what he was able to do with a full complement of snaps against Oregon. And he had several sacks, several pressures, got into the backfield regularly, was making a, a lot of a lot of things very difficult for Oregon in the run game as well. So Marcus Stripling is that guy. And then to finish it up on the offense, again, several other guys we need to have really good seasons for Oklahoma. But Braden Willis is one of those that he's going to get a full opportunity to be the starter, to be the lead guy at tight end. Now, he's kind of been listed as an H-back tight end in years past, but I think he'll get used primarily as an inline tight end somebody who's going to line up next to the offensive line. You might see them split. You might see him split out a little bit, but I think Jeff Levy is going to use him in that kind of inline position when they go. We're going to see a lot of 11 personnel out of Jeff Levy's, Levy's offense. So maybe not as many two tight end sets, but when they do use one tight end, it's going to be Braden Willis. I think is going to be the starter. And I think he's going to have a good season for, him, for them. I don't know if he'll, if he'll have like a Mark Andrews type season, but if you can get like four or 500 yards, and three to five touchdowns out of him, I think that'll be a really, really strong year. And I think it just helps open everything up for everybody else. And the great thing about having a guy like Braden Willis, who is such a great blocker, is that when you have him on the field, teams don't know whether you're going to run or you're going to pass. Now, there are guys that play tight end. They, if they're on the field, you know that it's probably a run play because of their blocking. Daniel Parker Jr., the transfer from Missouri, is a devastating blocker. Brent Venables talked about him in his hour and a half press briefing a few weeks back, but that's a guy that when he's on the field, you're like 90% sure that they're going to run the ball. A guy like Braden Willis, who does have some pass catching ability, just hasn't really had a full opportunity to show it because they've been so deep at tight end and H back. This could be the chance to show that he could be a full-time tight end. He can catch the ball all over the field. I mean, we saw several times, throughout the 2021 season where he was a dynamic pass catcher for the Oklahoma Sooners. Now he's going to get an opportunity to show that even further. And because he's such a devastating run blocker, they don't lose anything by having him on the field. And so I think he's going to have a great chance to, to have a really good year and have the best year of his career in 2022. But that's going to do it for today's episode of Locked On Sooners. Hey, let me know. What do you think about uh, who's going to need to have a breakout season for the Oklahoma Sooners in 2022 for them to have a successful year to win the Big 12? What do you think about their the Heisman odds for Dylan Gabriel at plus 3,300 or the Oklahoma Sooners at plus 4,000? Are those odds that you'd put money on? Let me know in the comment section here on YouTube if you're subscribed here. If you're not, make sure you go subscribe to the show on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts are free and available on all platforms. But until next time where we're going to chop it up with the Lockdown Big 12 crew, I'm John Williams. Hope you have a great day. Stay warm if you're getting that icy inclement weather, and I'll talk to you next time. Boomer Sooner.